Hapa, <laughs> yaya. She will is as a whole hapa, area. Backyard. Yeah. Backyard ndo. Aweze ku kupata hata kama utunojea shwali. That's why you brought me here. Eh, wazee, unaje ni muhimu. Welcome to it. It's been an exciting time here in Siaya. We are mm. at uh, the VIP hotel mm -hmm. uh, which has amazing grounds as you'll yeah. see throughout uh, the course of our breakfast this morning. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot planned for you and want to just show you Siaya. Yes, we want so. to show you all about Siaya and this place is ma I told you how to pronounce it yesterday. I forgot. Madea. Madea. There it is. Madea. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so like Joey said, we are at the VIP right here in Siaya, at the VIP hotel right here in Siaya County. And uh, we have a lot lined up for you in today's show. We're going to be talking to some of the political aspirants uh, in this area as well and some of the, the, the you know, the, on, on some of the views they have about devolution, about NASA politics, about politics in general, mm -hmm. and uh, just they can shed light on that as well. So it's going to be a good conversation. Yeah, I also will be talking to some beauty queens from Siaya, uh, Miss Kenya Siaya, as well as Miss Tourism Siaya will be joining us later on to, uh, you know, show us the county and tell us uh, a little bit about themselves. So later on, plus the mm -hmm. food. Yes. Hey, to 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 some yeah. of the local delegates. the local delegates, yes. We're yeah. going to be in the kitchen, as you can see, uh, the pictures there. We're going to be eating some brilliant food and hopefully you can learn a few things. Yes. Yeah. Whether Kamongo, Omena. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll learn before the show is over. Yeah. But like yeah. you said, lots coming up. I keep it here on uh, Power Breakfast. Willis is going to be kicking off with his uh, yes, sir. Uh, political interview uh, mm -hmm. in just a, a short while here. Yep, exactly. And if you want to join the conversation, the hashtag to use is Power Breakfast. And uh, also, you can also tweet at Willis Saburu at joy underscore Madengi and at vip underscore madea madea ni m a d e y a <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> yeah, all right so what's up in the end yes Zidi. okay not forgetting fred indimuli at fred indimuli uh who uh, has been holding it down for us this morning like we said the hashtag is power breakfast we are out in the county and we hope to be coming to many more counties near you uh the air is fresher out here i must say nairobi people <laughs> They've got us on that. Uh, it's going to be an exciting time. And uh, don't forget this evening here on Citizen TV, 10 over 10 is going to be coming uh, to you live from this very location here at the VIP Hotel. Uh, we're going to be poolside. It's going to be an exciting time, so you do not want to miss this. If you've ever missed a 10 over 10, tonight is not the one to miss. We'll be hanging out with some of uh, the students from local universities uh, and talking to them about their experiences out uh, in the county. But for now, Power Breakfast, like we said, continues uh, here at the VIP Hotel in uh, Siaya, getting to know more about this county, about its politics, its food, its beauty queens, its people. Uh, and if you have any contributions, like we said, use the hashtag Power Breakfast. Uh, the SMS line still open. It's 22422 here on uh, Citizen TV. Willis Abu, like I said, standing by with some of the aspirants, uh, political aspirants uh, in the upcoming election. So I'm going to uh, hand it over to Willis to continue. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Joey. Of course, like we told you, we're going to be having uh, a political discussion as well, and uh, and you know just to talk about uh, the region and break down a few matters, uh, not just the region politics, but also politics in general. Because of course, all of us have views on that. And just again, as a reminder, if you, want, you have any questions, views, and comments for any of the aspirants here, the hashtag to use is Power Breakfast on Twitter, and uh, you can also tag us on our Citizen TV Kenya at Willis Abura Joy underscore Mudengi. So I'll start. Uh, on my left, at the end, uh, we have Otieno Alun, he's the aspirant for Ugenya constituency. Uh, yeah. In the middle, it's the middle, right? One, two, three, four. <laughs> yes, in the middle, we have Agost Agustin Neto, uh, he's the aspirant for Arieda. And then, of course, uh, David Ohito, uh, who is the aspirant for Ugenya. David, of course, uh, familiar face I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> so welcome and thank you so much for taking time to speak to us I guess we'll, we'll, we'll keep, kick it off with uh, what your view they just concluded the evolution conference uh, you know as, uh, it ended yesterday and I guess we will start by your views on is devolution really working I'll start with you, David, as you go through the Thank you, Willis, for having us on this set and from uh, home ground, this is our county. Uh, I must say that uh, this thing called devolution was one of the best revolutions Kenya's ever had since independence. 
However, we've had challenges here and there. Uh, the first pioneer team, which I've just done four years in office, some have done a good job, some have tried, and I think uh, despite the challenges, there are so many goods that we can count on. We have seen opening up of roads, for example, in Fair County, and we have to say kudos to mm -hmm. Governor Sanga for having done that. And uh, we have seen um, improvement of health services. That has been done pretty well. But there's still a lot that needs to be done, for example, in Fair County, in terms of distribution of clean, safe water for the people and empowerment of uh, women and youth. Mm -hmm. So many youth are still unemployed. It cannot be that... Uh, every other youth who is out of school only aspires to be a Boda Boda rider mm -hmm. and riding a Boda Boda who is owned by some merchant somewhere. Mm -hmm. So there have been goods, there have been quick wins, but there have also been lots of challenges that have confronted the evolution. Mm -hmm. I will always single out Mandera County, a county that was marginalized for a very long time. I've done some work there and if you see the projects which have been implemented, the infrastructure, the hospitals which have been built, it tells you how good this thing called evolution has changed, particularly marginalized areas. Mm -hmm. Maybe areas like Sierra Kisumu, not much may be seen to have been done, mm -hmm. but there's room to always improve. To improve. All right, what about you, Augusto? Uh, thank you, Willis. I think uh, devolution uh, is uh, one, uh, one of the uh, ideas, good ideas, brilliant ideas eh, that the new constitution gave the Republic of Kenya. But unfortunately, uh, we have to admit, we've had missteps along the way. Uh, I will not fault the governors because I feel they are the pioneers of uh, devolution. But I believe they've not been uh, consistent with uh, really what the common man wants. Most of the things that you see as development, that is according to me. I will leave uh, the general evaluation to the Wanainchi to really uh, see for themselves and decide what are the, uh, the guys who have performed and the ones, that, uh, the ones that have not performed. But I will say, as per uh, my evaluation, most of the things that you see are mere peers public relations. When you look at the other counties, uh, what you see in the newspapers, those are just artistic impressions. Nothing much is going on there. Me, that's what I can say. And when we go back to CIA, where I come from, let me tell you, uh, I will not uh, again evaluate uh, our governor. That's when I will leave it to the people of CIA to, to do. But personally, I think uh, it can do better. It can do better. It can improve because the amount of money that we have in CIA that has been given to the counties in general is so huge. Mm. Those are not petty cash. So I believe they can uh, offer services to our people and better services for that matter. Mm -hmm. So we are saying, please, for the guys who are going for elections and for guys who are going to come up uh, uh, who are going to get into offices after uh, August uh, 8th, we expect them to do better. Mm -hmm. We can forgive the governor, the current governor, for having been <laughs> the pioneer <laughs> of... <laughs> because, you see, when this is something, a new idea that they really didn't know yeah. from uh, the beginning, so there are a lot of things that they had to come up with. There are a lot of uh, structures that we put up, but I still believe most of them, if not all, most of them, they perform below average. Below average. Yeah. All right. What, what is your view on the matter, uh, Mr. Otiena? Yeah, thank you very much, Willis. I think uh, the evolution is one thing that uh, people really look for. All along, we have been looking at how, well, how can we be able to get resources going to different regions so that people can manage their resources with their talents. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is that in the course of uh, waiting for this, there are those that were not prepared for it. They were not even imagining, or if they ever imagined, they didn't have how will we approach it. So some of this thing has come as a surprise to them. So you see a struggle. So unfortunately in the course of struggling, you take too much time 
trying to plan and yet time doesn't wait for you. And that's why you find those people who are really looking for it and who are ready have done a, wonder, a wonderful job. Those that got it and started now by the time it has landed is when they are starting to work on it. It's been a challenge. And I think um, uh, if we don't really even blame an individual, uh, I, I, I mean like our own county in Siaya, obviously is something that uh, as a people we have been looking forward to getting this because truly she has been been lagging behind uh, in many development aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, but you cannot really, I uh, won't really blame uh, the governor, our, our first governor, uh, for one reason that he had actually confessed right from the time when he entered the office that he was actually woke enough. He didn't even know that he was going to get the position. So, but I think he is picking up and uh, uh, we are watching how things are, uh, are, are going on. Mm -hmm. I just bring it closer home as well because uh, uh, you, you, you want to make it to Parliament uh, next, next uh, after August 8th. And uh, the current crop of, of, of the leaders in the, in, the, in the House, that is the National Assembly, where you, know, you have to have been labeled different, uh, <laughs> different names. Uh, from MPs to uh, you know they, they have been accused of rampant corruption. So what do you th what do you think of that situation? One and two, what what are you offering as a change? Because there has been a lot of even by the statistics we saw with IBC, there is a lot of voter apathy. Most and most of the young people saying, ah, you know. Uh, there's no need to vote because wale wale too. even if we elect uh, David or, or Augustine or, or, or Tien Alur, uh, they are good now, but uh, five years later, they'll be kings and dons. <laughs> what do you have to say to that? Thank you, Willie. Uh, if you look at societies all over the world, societies are changed by individuals who are well-meaning, who are committed, who are called to leadership who have good ideas that can improve living standards and make society a better place to live in. Uh, when we have selfish leaders who are just looking at their pockets and who see corruption and never say that is bad, then we continue to have a problem in society. If we are going to have a parliament which cannot check the executive, tell them that there is corruption here, we need to check this, we must stop it. We have a a legislative assembly that cannot address issues, cannot be seen to be part of solution provision, then it's good for nothing. If we are going to have a society where children are not going to school, they are missing the right to access education, yet you have MPs sitting. I come from Ubenya constituency, mm -hmm. and I am very sad that you have an MP, you have a CDF, you have a county bursary fund, and the best student who won in Ubenya constituency, Stephen Ayod, 417 marks cannot access fees to go to school, then that leadership is good for nothing. They should just pack and go home. Mm -hmm. And this is why we are saying we need change of mindset, change of leadership, that we listen to the people, both rich, poor and the middle class, and try and provide solutions. No child in Kenya should ever miss a chance to go to school. It's a basic constitutional right, and we must ensure if we have a society where people cannot go to school, then Oh, we are not fit to be in leadership. That is the kind of thing I want to start bringing in. Mm -hmm. We cannot have a county where people are sleeping hungry, yet you can see the soil is very productive, the weather is very good. We must put enough food on the table for the people of Fair County and the people of Ugenia constituency. Mm -hmm. And three, we must start finding solutions of how to unlock massive unemployment which is affecting the youth. We have so many Bora Bora youth just hanging about our villages because we cannot creatively engage them into meaningful economic production. Mm -hmm. Yes, Willis. I think uh, what is ailing the society? One, we must have a right mindset. That is one. From the leaders, to the common man, the people that we always call the common man, right? Mm -hmm. The right mindset, it has to be there. Mm -hmm. We cannot lump all the leaders, all the MPs, from the MCAs, MPs and the government as bad, corrupt or what. What we must know, when you get to parliament, for sure, what are you going to do? What is that thing that is compelling you? 
that much that you want to be a member of a parliament for a particular place. Now, in a society that we come from, you've talked of voter party, where people say we elect, then what happens? After five years, the leaders they come back looking for votes. Mm. They actually and come back in the fifth year. Yeah, in the fifth year yes. to look for votes. To look yeah? for votes yes. And when they come back, mm. they come back a different <coughs> sort of people. This is not the person that you uh, you voted for uh, when he was uh, getting into parliament. Five years down the line, when he comes back, he wants cool again. What happens? People get divisioned. Why? Because when we want to go to parliament initially, we really have brilliant ideas, but we never implement. So that is what affects the society. That is what brings about the voter apathy. What we need to do, and I always believe and I think our people should really put our leaders to account. They should account. For the five years that you've been given, that you promised that you're going to work, you're supposed to stick to your key points. Let me tell you, and I think you come from uh, Nyanza. You know the poverty levels that we have. And you are not a politician. But I know you get so many of these SMSs where people, they've got nothing to eat. Guys who want to go to school, our young, uh, our young girls and boys who want to go to school. What happens? We have bursary from the county level to uh, constituency level. Why can't we have our boys and girls in school? Why should you be told? Why should somebody come to you? Me, I haven't gone to school. I passed my marks. I was called to this good school, but I'm, I'm, I'm unable to attend. What happens? Simply because when we get into parliament, most of the leaders when they get into parliament, they become selfish. They think about themselves and them alone. Uh, what we need to do, I think, one, we need to empower our people. That is one. We need to empower our folks such that uh, when you are given the five years, please, look for those things that you can really use to engage our people. Yeah. Let them earn something. Let them have something. Yeah. Such that at the end of the five years, it is not only you that uh, when they look at you, they say, this one, we voted for him when he was just like one of us. <laughs> and we thought with the brilliant ideas that he had, then Kumbe, what he went there to do was just to uh, a mass, a mass yes. the massive wealth that he has. Mm -hmm. you, you see, those guys, as much as maybe you can afford uh, a good house, everyone wants that, a good house, uh, good cars, and all that good life, everybody wants it. But at the end of the day, you must really uh, strive so hard mm -hmm. to change the society that you come from. Right. I think that one is what should compel each and every leader. Mm -hmm to really do. Yeah. Thank you, Elise. I, I think the biggest challenge that we have had in terms of uh, uh, the choice of the people is that the uh, uh, MPs, just like any other job, uh, must be interviewed, must be interrogated, must be known from where they come from. Because surprise leaders are the people that really mess us up. I say this because I've seen the constituent I come from. Uh, when like, part of uh, some people come to be elected, even without campaigning, and I think campaign is informative. It's like a, a form of civil, uh, civic education. So to me, uh, before somebody is elected, uh, the population, the electorate, need to look at the person, check his background, who is he from the constituency, where does he come from, what has he done. Some people get elected without even attending one funeral uh, ceremony, not even one Harambe within the constituency. <laughs> so it's not known. Mm -hmm. So you find just like he comes in without being known, he will leave without being known. And some of them take advantage that the fact that he's not known, he will leave also without being known. Mm -hmm. So I think these are the things that actually ail us. Mm -hmm. And when you elect a leader, 
who may not uh, has never faced the electorate has never been known so what you end up uh, with is that apathy because the man now handles the constituency as his uh, personal property without including anybody mm -hmm. so people don't even know what goes on so how do you want to uh, you said ah this thing it is for so and so and therefore let him do away with, i mean die with it so i think when because uh, when people get elected and they are not clear with what their mandates are we can talk about representation legislation oversight but who know who what what those things are sometimes you can take one line only you go to parliament and you do what you call legislation uh so maybe you will go there and uh, what you are known for maybe is just making noise only but you have forgotten that other mandates are also there represent network with people and so on yeah. let people know you involve everybody so when when you are a lone ranger you will leave a lone ranger yes so to me i think like every other job let the electorate interrogate investigate and know who they want to elect mm -hmm. right from the beginning i guess also i'll pick up from where you left and i'll pose the question back to you again because the nominations are also uh coming up uh soon and in especially in uh, you know in now nasa <laughs> there have been a lot of claims of like you said people will just show up on the last day and uh, get the ticket uh, hasn't attended a funeral hasn't campaigned like you said so are you are you uh, uh gentlemen seated here worried about the nomination uh, exercise that is coming up uh, yes definitely nomination our prayer my prayer is that nasa team will organize a credible and fair nomination because most people who have never crisscrossed the constituency people don't know them the only single thing that they plan is how they will tagarize how they will buggle the election mm. because they are already under threat they have fear <laughs> so the only thing they can plan is to stop going around and uh, being available and being seen all he can be cap able to craft is how he will spoil the nomination that's why you see people saying uh, power is not uh, given you uh, it's grab it's not uh, you know you <laughs> cannot be given you grab <laughs> so i think that's uh, really a very pathetic and mis uh, unfortunate uh, way of looking at this thing mm -hmm. it is the people that give you power mm -hmm. and power belongs to them mm -hmm. but the issue that you can come from nairobi with the thugs and get it just because that's the way it goes is a wrong perception mm -hmm. i think we should be able to uh, make sure that we talk to the people let people know you if they like you they'll vote for you if they don't like fine you can either wait for another day or simply face off mm -hmm. and uh, what about you Augustine, uh, uh, about the nomination uh, exercise and, <laughs> and uh, will, will the so-called direct nomination quote will unquote it, will it, let me tell you mm -hmm. everybody everyone i think even with my good friends here nominations are uh, there is a monster is a tricky affair mm -hmm. and uh, it boils down to first i think parties they don't have the type of resources that they can really do good uh, nominations huh? but again you see politics is like a profession let me tell you you don't just wake up one day and say there's there, there must be something that is compelling you that you really feel that is so dear to your heart that you feel this thing this is what i want to really implement this is what is not being done right this is what i need to do and this is why i want to be in politics mm -hmm. let me tell you me i'm a surveyor by profession if i don't practice the use of, the use of that machine for a few months so uh, let's say six seven months <coughs> eh? <coughs> you won't be the same with a person who does the same thing every day right so in politics it has to be a calling mm -hmm. but we have guys that uh, when you amass some wealth some little money some few millions then you feel the next thing i want to go into politics but then you see like i'll confine myself to where i come from i come from Rarida constituency i vied in 2013 again is the current uh, member of parliament when i was defeated i came number two when mm -hmm. i was defeated then i decided i had some brilliant ideas that i really wanted to implement that i really wanted to do 
So what did I do? I never stopped. The current MP has been working, and I've been working along, alongside him. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. Now, the problems come where the guys who have amassed that wealth, the guys who feel that, uh, and let me tell you, the guys who feel that they have brilliant minds. But let me tell you, sometimes you need also a listening uh, uh, mind to a listening art. Mm -hmm. huh? Those guys, the last minute guys, they come when we have only two months or three months to elections. Then surely, you have a gentleman here yeah, mm -hmm. who has been with your constituents for the last five or six years, working with them, experiencing going through whatever they are going through every day. Then you just want to come and pick that certificate. What I feel and what I believe, I think NASA and CODE in I mean, and uh, ODM in particular, I think this time round we need to do better nominations. Mm -hmm. Let us give the guys who deserve to be members of parliament, be members of parliament. Mm -hmm. All of us can never be members of parliament. But I think there must be a criteria mm -hmm. that we are going to use. And let, when you talk about democracy, let the people whom we want to lead give us the right people that they really feel deserve the seat. Right. Not somebody comes from somewhere and says, and you see, so and so, we ate with them in, a, in an hotel somewhere, mm -hmm. and uh, we are good buddies. Now, me, if I'm in charge of that constituency, then I feel, you mm -hmm. come with that mindset that me, I feel, that is the person that I'm going to give. No, I think that is very wrong. Yes, I want to, Let I want us to, give yes. a nomination to the winner. I want to go to David because he's been having a cheeky smile. <laughs> 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 so that he can explain. <laughs> Will it? All over the world, nominations are never easy. Mm -hmm. Look at the Democratic nominations in the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, how Hillary clinked the ticket. It wasn't easy. I'll get back to the Kenyan example. In 1988 here, yeah, there was Mulolongo. You line up. And I witnessed one case in Fair County where the guy with the longest queue was not given the, the ticket. Mm -hmm. And the D.C.s then were the returning officers. They simply say, okay, if you have more voters, they see your queue is longer, they tell you guys, sit down. And the guy who uh, the party wants or who has been, you know, uh, given the go-ahead by Kanu headquarters, will have 10 people in the queue and then they'll say, you did not follow the nomination rules, the guy with four guys is the candidate and that's it. Mm. Come to the parties that we have now. There is no single popular party that will have it easy at nomination level. Uh, and I, I, I hate the ODM critics who always throw mad at the party saying they hold chaotic nominations. It's only a beautiful girl that guys may not over, fight over. And that's why, you know, there will always <coughs> be that kind of, you know, um, chaotic arrangement. Because they are so not are you okay with the chaos? I'm not okay with okay. chaos. Okay. But as long as we respect the democratic choice of the people, the citizens, I have no problem with mm -hmm. that. What we are saying is that in many cases we've had opponents of ODM who have never even held nominations. Who has ever held any nomination in Jubilee? Mm -hmm. No, just appointing party interim officials has been a nightmare for them. Mm -hmm. That shows you there's big trouble. Uh, President Uhuru was not nominated by anybody, he was just handpicked. So was Ruto. There was never any nomination in URP. So let us fairly look at the parties. But there is an argument that NASA must get it right. NASA is a coalition. So far the only coalition, according to the list published yesterday by IABC chair. And we have what we call parties within NASA. In this place, this is an ODM zone, if you like. So you must fight it right within ODM. But there have been challenges in uh, especially urban constituencies where uh, you have a candidate, two very strong candidates, and somebody wins the nomination by just over 200 votes, and then the other guy says, let me bolt out, let me run as an independent. Really? When you that? break those <laughs> two... I had a question two, 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 Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Go ahead. yes. What do you mean by two strong candidates? Because, yeah, 
Uh, let me tell you. Uh, do you want me to answer the two strong candidates? Uh, yeah, yeah, a closely okay. contested election yes. where somebody wins with, say, less than 500 votes. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we can have two strong candidates yes. with good following. Yes. That is what you are... Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yes. Absolutely right. But let me ask you a question. Yeah. If today... Uh, I'll confirm myself to where I come from. Go ahead. Uh, I come from Ravienda. <laughs> Uh, right now, and, I'm, uh, and I I'm hope you are a strong candidate. I, I'm happy to say this. <laughs> I, I, I want to tell Raburu. Uh, yes. I'm happy to tell you this. I'm like the incumbent mm -hmm. in my constituency. <laughs> Everyone wants to. Kukua can die. Uh, NATO has to go. Mm -hmm. they, 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 this guy, we have to defeat him. But we have another strong candidate in court. Uh, by virtue of him having. A close relations. <laughs> close relations, or you were not even that. Yeah. Having worked in those uh, big commissions. Okay. So close relations so with, with the people. Uh, no, 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 yeah. Not with the people. Yeah. It, it is. It, it is relations in quotes. Those are the things <laughs> that they buy around. Eh? Yeah. But what happens is this: is a big man, is a strong person, just by virtue of having been, having worked somewhere. You get it. So when he comes, we have two strong candidates. NATO being the candidate that has been there is a grassroots person. And that candidate who is coming just by virtue of having L, a bigger position somewhere. So those are also two. I'll, I'll give you free counsel, NATO. Please just go to the ground, fight it out, beat him fair and square, and come to parliament. Join me there. Yeah, before you, I'll also, I'll, uh, yes, you wanted to add something. No, I just uh, wanted to comment that I think we, our biggest prayer right now should be like, it should be that NASA should just organize uh, uh, fair and a credible nomination process. We should not really create a party mm -hmm. that it will not work. Yeah. Because I think what has happened before, which is a challenge to all of us, I've, been, I've contested even the previous election, where candidates do their own nominations. So if you have your, your, your debes or whatever it is, you're doing yours. So at the end of the day, who will put them together to call Ohito as one, we don't even know. So I think what we must all agree and support if there's a way candidates can support the party to do credible nomination from wherever we come from, mm. let it be done. Because the worst thing you want to do, politics and this nomination takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money, mm -hmm. a lot of things. So the best thing is simply to pray that nomination be done well. Mm -hmm. We should be up and down. And just maybe one of the last questions I also wanted to ask is, clearly, normally the biggest uh, fights are grumblings from, uh, like you said, you alluded to it, Augustine, talking about what is known as the Baba factor, uh, where it seems like because candidate A might be close to to Baba Atapata, or candidate B is not so close, Atapata. That's, that's when you have the situation that you, Augustine was talking about of <laughs> two strong candidates. So one, being strong with the people, two, being strong with Baba. Uh, is, is such a thing a challenge? Is this a, a, a is it something we are assuming or is it something that actually happens and what is the what is the solution how can we get out of this uh, kind of thing uh, it let happens let me, in the let me, let me, let me you tell you also yes yes David is already twitching let me tell you I would not even say that these people are closer to Baba mm -hmm. as they say it in uh, Nyanza region eh? in fact in ODM strongholds there are people who feel Maybe Baba is not even aware of these people, but they just feel it is in their imagination eh, that they are closer to, ba to Baba. But let me tell you, we have, we have this funny thing. We have this funny occurrence in uh, most of our constituencies. You find a gentleman or uh, a lady, when you just share uh, a bottle of soda with uh, Baba in an hotel somewhere, then you take a photo, then you beam it all over in social media. You see, I was just with Baba the other day. Eh? But every candidate is closer to Baba. Every candidate. But the guys, the weaker ones, the, the guys who will come. You see, I took lunch with Baba Jana. I just saw me, I, I just, uh, I was just with him in an hotel somewhere. I was, 
it's a fact like thing. Mm. So those are the type of leaders that we should really, really be worried about. Okay, very quickly because of time, uh, David, and then uh, uh, you know, it's about good leadership, good qualities of a leader. Uh, who do we aspire to be? And um, I don't. Uh, Baba is a factor here. He influences a lot of politics. But in very few instances have I seen uh, Baba interfering with uh, nominations in a constituency. You know, I, mean, I mean, let's be fair to him. Mm -hmm. uh, there, those in politics, you know, they are fear factor all. What I think is ailing my good friend Neto here. <laughs> fear nobody. If you are with the people, who will deny you? You know, make it almost impossible even for that barber to say, I can't avoid this guy. So uh, my counsel again would be just let's have free, fair nominations that reflect the will and decision of the voters, the people. Mm -hmm. Then we'll get it right. Mm -hmm. I, I think the issue of uh, people perceiving that uh, there are people who are more, are more closer to Baba than others, first, <coughs> that need not worry anybody. Every individual is closer to somebody. Uh, so <laughs> it, yeah, so <laughs> you, 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 you can be, you can be, you ca the fact that you are um, Baba Sanders does not actually uh, make you not contest. So everybody is closer in one way or the other because mm. we are in public service. And I think what people need to do, if you think people are closer to Baba, why can't you also be closer to Baba? <laughs> For me, I've been in this particular race, this is going to be my third time. And um, the only thing that I've, uh, I did this particular time around is to make sure that I consult, reach people, let Baba know that you are in the race. I, I think there's some of the things that we normally uh, do errors on. You cannot afford to be in uh, someone's company, for that matter, and they don't even know that you are in that company. So I think reaching and saying, Baba, I'm around. I'm also contesting. Uh, Baba is always available. That's what I realize. <laughs> and it's he, not a question of favoritism. Mm -hmm. Just let everybody we know. Like in ODM, the hierarchy. If you are in ODM, let ODM know that you are around. And you are also contesting in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Because you are actually not in isolation. <laughs> so it's part of leadership to reach to, to everybody. So for mm -hmm. me, it doesn't worry me. Like uh, when um, uh, I'm, I'm running in Uganda constituency. One day is not a threat to me. Uh, whether it's a political affairs secretary, it's not a threat to me because that's just a position. That doesn't give you any age at all. All we need to do is go to the electorate. Baba is seeing. Baba is not a blind person, neither is he a deaf. He's seeing. <laughs> every day is actually the most person who collects data every minute. So they know. Like in Ugunja, obviously, uh, I believe he knows what is going on. And it's not a secret that I'm ahead of uh, the current uh, MP. But that's not necessarily an advantage. What we are saying is, as long as that the nominations are fair. We are in for a challenge. Mm -hmm. All right, of course, I would like to say uh, <laughs> a big thank you to the gentlemen also for, for coming uh, through. Uh, to, you know, Alur, the astronaut for Ugunja, Augustine, later the astronaut for Rarieda, uh, who uh, we hope will be close to Baba <laughs> on a lighter note. <laughs> and then we also have David uh, Ohito last one for Ugenya. I uh, will be talking to them and of course I see some of your questions as well coming. I want to toss it right now though uh, before we continue to Joey. Uh, like we say there's a lot more here. We remember you're live at the VIP hotel uh, here in Siaya, uh, in Madea in Siaya County and a uh, very beautiful place with different venues. We want to toss you over to one such venue. And remember we are Bado Tunakula for those of you who know how to make fish, eh? we'll be at the kitchen. And then Joey also wants to talk to uh, the Miss CIA as well. So uh, still a lot more coming up. Uh, stay tuned right here at the VIP Hotel. Over to you, Joey. <laughs>